You're about to book your next cruise, maybe the first cruise for several months, and you've narrowed it down between Carnival and Norwegian. Which one should you pick? Which one is better? That's what we're going to talk about today on CruiseReport.com. Okay, so let me get some disclaimers out of the way right up front. My name is Chris Dickman. I'm the president of CruiseReport.com, and we are a cruise information website. This video today is not being sponsored by Carnival or Norwegian. We have sailed on both of these cruise lines in the past 12 months, and both times on their largest, newest ships, Norwegian Encore and Carnival Panorama. So I just want to give you a little bit of background on our history with these cruise lines. We have sailed with Carnival more than we have with Norwegian. So we have a lot more experience with Carnival than we do with Norwegian. Uh, we've only done a three-day press trip uh, with Norwegian last December on the brand new Norwegian Encore. So I'm going to do my best to compare these two cruise ships, cruise lines, experiences based on our experiences. I should also mention that we talk about these cruise experiences from the perspective of an adult couple traveling without kids. So we don't have kids, we don't travel with kids, so we're talking to those of you that are couples and you're looking for the best experience. Now, what's important to me and Ricky may not be important to you. You may have other things that are important to you. So you have to make your decision on which cruise line is best based on what your preferences are. But I'm just going to go through a few areas of the ships that I think uh, outline the different experience areas. Let's talk first about embarkation. Now, we've done embarkation several times with Carnival. Uh, we've done it in Miami. We've also done it in Long Beach. Uh, the Long Beach experience was a little better. Carnival has a faster to the fun option that you can purchase. I highly recommend it. You do get on the ship a lot quicker. It seems to be a much more refined, easier experience for embarkation. As for Norwegian's embarkation, it's a little more difficult to say because we've only done the one media trip. We got to the port pretty late in the day. I think most people had already embarked. It was a very easy process, but it's hard to compare the two. So I'm really going to say it's a wash. I don't know that either one has an advantage on embarkation. And the reason I'm not going to rate either one of them is because embarkation procedures are going to change pretty dramatically thanks to COVID-19. And we haven't sailed with either cruise line, obviously, since COVID-19. As far as ship layout, if I'm comparing the Carnival Panorama and that class of ship to the Norwegian Encore, I'm going to give the thumbs up to the Carnival Panorama. Now, the main reason is because Carnival has three different stairwells and elevator banks along the ship, whereas the Norwegian ship only had two. So it seemed like you had to do a little more walking on Norwegian to get to where you wanted to go. When you come to the Lido deck on Norwegian, uh, you don't really have any restaurants or places to eat out by the pool. On Carnival, it's very easy if you're sitting out at the Lido deck. It's very easy to get a guy's burger. It's very easy to get um, even a walk through the buffet to get a slice of pizza or whatever. It just seemed a little more logical. But then again, we're used to Carnival because we've been on several of their ships. Perhaps if you're a Norwegian enthusiast, you get used to this layout, and it just seemed like the Carnival panorama made a little more sense to us. When it came to the pools, I personally preferred how Carnival has their pool set up. They've got sort of an adult pool at the very back of the ship on the Lido deck, and then in the center of the ship or midship, they have the main pool where, you know, everybody can 
participate in that. I don't know that it's specifically an adult pool at the back of the ship, but it just seems like it appeals more to the adults on the ship. And uh, I just felt like the Lido deck and the pool area, everything on Carnival was a little bit more thought out than it was on Norwegian. However, one area where, where Norwegian has an obvious advantage is in their water slides. Their water slides look incredible. Now, it was a little too cool when we were on Norwegian Encore to try out the slides, but we could just tell by looking that these were some seriously intense water slides, and we would love to go back on Norwegian Encore and try out those slides. Carnival has two water slides on Panorama, and they're okay, and they're fun, but they don't look to be anything like the ones on Norwegian. They really did a good job with the water slides on Norwegian uh, Encore. Now, when it comes to onboard activities that are unique and different, again, I think Norwegian has a slight edge here. They've got on Encore, they have the go-kart track, which was super fun, super cool. They also have a pretty extensive laser tag setup up on the top deck, very nicely done. And the Galaxy Pavilion is a virtual reality center that I've never been to one before, and it was amazing. And I know the kids are going to love it, but even adults, it's a lot of fun. So I would say for these onboard unique activities, uh, Norwegian probably has the advantage over Carnival Panorama. Carnival Panorama did have the uh, Sky Ride, which is a lot of fun, and the Ropes Course, which was also a pretty cool feature. So there are th plenty of things to do outside on Carnival too, but I still feel Norwegian probably has the edge. When it comes to adult-only areas, as far as outdoor pool areas, I think Norwegian also has an advantage. Carnival has the sanctuary up at the front of the ship. It can get really, really windy up there. Uh, also, we have seen kids up there, even though it's supposed to be adult only. I'm not sure how seriously they monitor it. But uh, the one on Norwegian is more midship, and it's huge, but it is really nicely done. And I don't know how the costs compare. I don't think there's a cost on Carnival. I think you just have to get up there early. But there is a charge on Norwegian to use the adult-only pool area. So let's talk about food and dining. And obviously, dining is going to change thanks to COVID. But based on our experiences, here's what I can tell you right now. When it comes to the buffet area, and Ricky and I are not big buffet people. However, I would give a nod to Norwegian for their garden cafe. I think it was a much nicer buffet. The food looked better. Uh, it was just a better layout. We had a really good meal there on embarkation day. We had a noodle dish that we, they had like an Asian station making fresh noodle soups. It was excellent. Uh, by contrast, we've never had great experience with any of the buffets on Carnival, the Lido Marketplace. I don't know. Maybe it's just because it's so crowded and the food just kind of looks average and tired. It's, it's really the only dining experience on Carnival that we're disappointed with is the buffet. But then again, I want to emphasize we are not buffet people. But in our book, Garden Cafe gets the thumbs up. As far as the main dining rooms, I can't really speak much to this because we rarely eat in the main dining room. On Carnival Panorama, I think we had breakfast in there one morning. Every night we ate at one of the alternate restaurants because we're on a press trip or we're on a media trip where we're reviewing the ship and we want to be able to review all these different restaurants. And it's just there's just not enough time to get to main dining and all these restaurants in a seven-night cruise. So I don't really know if I can tell you which main dining is better on Norwegian or Carnival. When it comes to the variety and the number of restaurants between these two ships, there's no, no contest. Norwegian has tons of different restaurant options available. Uh, unfortunately, as I said, we were only on for three nights, so we only had a chance to th try three restaurants. So we went, ate at a barbecue place, an Italian place, 
and I don't remember what the other one was. They definitely have a bigger variety of restaurants on Norwegian Encore than they do on Carnival Panorama. That's not to say that Carnival does not have a lot of restaurant choices. They do. For example, when it comes to hamburgers, because I eat a lot of hamburgers, and uh, you can't beat Guy's Burgers on Carnival, period. They win, hands down. We did try the hamburger at the, I think it's called the American Grill or the American Diner on uh, Norwegian Encore. I can't remember the exact name of it, but uh, the hamburger was nowhere by, nowhere compares to the hamburger from Guy Fieri's uh, burger place uh, on Carnival Panorama and all Carnival ships. We've been on several Carnival ships that have Guy's Burgers and they're always amazing. So uh, I'll usually eat three or four cheeseburgers on each cruise just because they're that good. I don't know why every cruise line can't figure out how to make a good hamburger because it doesn't seem that difficult. Uh, but for whatever reason, Carnival's nailed it on the guy's burgers. Now for overall dining experience, again, I'm gonna give the nod to Carnival. Again, we've, we've dined more on Carnival and on Carnival Panorama, our last cruise, and then Carnival Vista before that, I believe it was Carnival Dream before that, we have just not had any complaints at all with the alternate dining venues. They have all been really good. The sushi restaurant's good. The, uh, the teppanyaki on Carnival Panorama was one of the best teppanyaki experiences we've ever had. We also dined one evening at the chef's table, which is an optional, I believe it was $100 a person. I'm not sure about that. Really, I mean, just top notch. We've eaten at several chef's tables, and the one on Carnival can compete with any of them. Uh, we love the little sushi restaurant and uh, just, you know, never had a problem. And the pizza on Carnival is really good. One thing we noticed on Norwegian Encore is these restaurants fill up really fast. So you have to make reservations in advance. You may not get to try the restaurant you want because it may be too full. We never had a problem getting into any restaurant on uh, Carnival Panorama. We did make reservations for the restaurants, but we didn't have any trouble getting in. Now let's talk about the accommodations. This is one area where I think Norwegian might have an advantage. We did stay in a mini suite, which is a little bit larger than your standard balcony cabin, but we did take a tour of the standard balcony cabins. And I would say I prefer Norwegians, cabins, and staterooms over carnivals. I like the fact that they have a sliding glass door leading out to the balcony as opposed to the hinged door because those hinged doors tend to slam shut and they're very loud when they do. Now the sliding doors can slam shut too, but just not as bad as the hinged door. I felt like the balcony on the Norwegian Encore was also a little bit larger. And because you've got the sliding glass door, the hinge door is not taking up some of the space. You can't put a chair there because when you open the door, uh, the door would hit the chair. So you seem to get more usable space out of, this, of the balcony on the Norwegian ship. I also preferred the decor of the Norwegian ship. So I'm, I, we like the staterooms on Carnival, but if I got to pick, if, if a stateroom's really important to you, I think especially that mini suite, the mini suite was very nice. And uh, they had nicer showers, uh, nicer shower stalls, everything just seemed a little bit uh, elevated over the Carnival stateroom. So we give a thumbs up to Norwegian for their overall their accommodations and their balconies. Now, when it comes to lounges, I'm going to give a thumbs up to Norwegian Encore for one reason, and that is the observation lounge at the very front of the ship on Norwegian Encore. That is probably one of, if not the nicest lounges we have ever seen on any ship, and it is absolutely huge. Uh, Carnival does not have this uh, forward-facing panoramic type lounge like they do on the Norwegian ships. And that's really a shame because a lot of times you want to sit in that lounge and look out as the ship's sailing. Maybe you're going to Alaska or wherever you are. It's just a really nice feature. And the, like I say, the lounge is huge. It covers almost half the ship on the deck that it's on. It's very nicely done, very nicely decorated, a lot of comfortable seating. Of course, there's a bar. And I believe you can even have breakfast there in the morning, like a continental breakfast setup. Very nicely done.
But when it comes to bars and drink service and drink quality, I'm going to go back to Carnival, primarily because of the Alchemy Bar on Carnival Panorama. Now, they have Alchemy Bar on other Carnival ships as well. And I got to tell you, it's probably our favorite bar on any cruise ship we've ever sailed on. We've sailed on over 135 of them, so we've had some experience. The Alchemy Bar makes hands down the best drinks. They have a cucumber drink. I, I believe it's called a cucumber sunrise or something like that. Absolutely one of the best drinks you've ever had. It's kind of their signature drink. And the bartenders are incredibly professional. Uh, they explain the drinks to you. The drinks are a little expensive there, but it's well worth it. And there's usually, you want to get there early because it usually gets crowded pretty quick. But it's a popular place. It's centrally located on the ship. And in my opinion, Carnival does have better drink service and better drinks than what we experienced on Norwegian Encore. They have a mojito bar on Norwegian Encore. We never could get in. We went there twice, and it was so crowded and so understaffed, nobody could wait on us. It's a real shame because we love mojitos, and we really wanted to try it, but we just didn't get to. And there are a couple of different bars like that on Norwegian Encore that we never got to try because it was so crowded. Now, when it comes to the staff and the service and the crew, I think both of these cruise lines are pretty even. Uh, we've never had a bad experience on Carnival uh, where we've had somebody be rude or didn't get felt like we didn't get good service. And in our three-day experience on Norwegian Encore, it's the same thing. Everybody seemed pretty pleasant and we just didn't have any problems there. So I'd give those, they're evenly matched in that area. Now, what about entertainment? Well, when it comes to the production shows, you've got to probably give Norwegian the nod here as well. Their production shows are almost like what you would expect on Broadway or in a Las Vegas show. Very well done, large cast, a lot of production goes into it, good sound, beautiful theater, very nicely done. Uh, the downside is you have to have reservations to go to a show. So if you don't get reservations, you may have to stand in line to take whatever's available. Uh, we did have reservations for one of the shows. We only got to see one of the two shows available because we just didn't have reservations for the second show. But the show that we did see was far and above production-wise, uh, 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 above what Carnival offers. Now, that said, the last Carnival cruise we were on, which was Panorama, uh, was much improved production shows over what we had seen on previous Carnival cruises. They've really spent some time upping their game when it comes to production shows. The sound was better. They did some very unique things with staging and performers. So Carnival is definitely getting better when it comes to production shows. But for now, I'm still going to say Norwegian gets the thumbs up. But when it comes to crew activities like hairy chest contests or trivia time, things like that, you can't beat Carnival. Carnival's crew staff are everywhere on the ship. There's always something going on. They've got stuff going on five different places on every ship all the time. I definitely give the thumbs up to Carnival for their crew activities that they do where they interact with the customers, with the, with the guests on board. Also, Carnival does a better job with their lounge musical acts. You can go to a bar on several different places on a carnival ship and you can hear a group playing, either a, either a duo or maybe even a single person, but sometimes a band with six or seven people in it. We didn't see that on Norwegian Encore. Uh, we only saw a couple of live music and it was like one or two people. But uh, Carnival puts a lot of effort into their entertainment and their onboard lounge acts are really, really good. We've never had a problem with Carnival's entertainment in that regard. And also, Carnival wins the thumbs up for the best comedy. They just have the Punchliner Comedy Club, which is hands down one of the best comedy club experiences you'll have anywhere, land or sea. We go almost every night because they have a lot of different entertainers. They're always rotating them. Uh, they do uh, one act. Usually each uh, comedian will do an act for kids and, an, and another act that's adult only a little later in the evening. And uh, you just can't beat the Punchliner Comedy Club Carnival has it when it comes to lounge acts, 
comedy clubs, and they're getting better on their production shows. There's also a relatively new area that we're going to talk about, and that is the upscale areas of the ship. Now, Carnival has what's called the Havana Club, and it's on one of the lower decks, and I believe it's on deck five on the panorama, but don't quote me on that. And these are some suites, the Havana Suites, which are a little bit elevated. I, I'm pretty sure this is an adult-only area, and they're all outside staterooms with nice large balconies, sometimes they even have little hammocks and things on them. And they have their own little private Havana club or uh, Havana pool, I should say. And it's very nice. We did get access to the Havana pool one day so we could see it. Very nice. It can get crowded, however, because I believe there are Havana suites on decks five and maybe even on deck six overlooking that Havana pool, kind of aft facing ships. This is at the aft, have, aft part of the vessel. And uh, the Havana Club's very nice. I didn't notice a separate concierge or anything like that for the Havana suites. I also didn't notice a separate uh, concierge club or any kind of other services. Now, if those existed, they, and they may exist, I just didn't see it. If you've stayed in a Havana suite, please put it in the comments down below. We did have an opportunity, however, to... Uh, take a tour of the Haven on Norwegian Encore. And I would say the Haven on Norwegian Encore surpasses the Havana suites or the Havana area on the Carnival ships. The Haven is a completely secluded area with separate suites that you have to have a special key card to get into. They do have their own concierge, they have their own bar, their own lounge, and they have their own restaurant. And the lounge is at the very front of the ship so that you get this magnificent panoramic view, just like you would in the observation lounge, but it's higher up on the vessel. It looked to be very nice. They had their own little breakfast area with continental breakfast set up the day we toured it. There's even a special private indoor pool for the Haven, as well as a private restaurant. You could basically eat in that restaurant every evening if you wanted to and never have to go out into the gym pop. If you go back and look at my ratings, Norwegian Encore actually got 13 thumbs up compared to Carnival with 11. But that doesn't tell the whole story because some of the areas that I give Norwegian the thumbs up in aren't necessarily areas that are that important to us. So for me and Ricky, as a couple traveling without kids, honestly, I think if I had to pick which cruise ship I was going to go back on, which cruise line I was going to go back on, I might lean toward Carnival. Just because of the dining, just because it didn't feel quite as crowded, I like the ship layout. I'm pretty comfortable with it. But Norwegian has a lot to offer. And we'd love to go back on Norwegian to experience more because there may be more that we don't have the feel for because we've only been on it for three days. And three days simply is not enough to get a feel for a cruise line or a cruise ship. That's why we don't tend to do these two or three day media trips because it really doesn't give us a feeling for the experience of what you're going to get when you go on a seven-day cruise. But nevertheless, we really liked Norwegian Encore, and we loved Carnival Panorama. So I don't think there's a bad choice here. You just need to go through and look at these things that we've rated and pick out what's important to you. Is accommodations more important to you than activities or team trivias and things like that? Everybody has different priorities of what they like and what are not important to them. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Please put your comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks again for joining me today on CruiseReport.com. Yeah,